I'm Andrew Murray, Director of Performance and Sports Science at the University of Oregon. At Oregon we pride ourselves on, on broad-based competitive excellence, both in the classroom and in athletics. Oregon competes as a member of the Pac-12 in the NCAA Championship. I'll be at the MIT Sloan Sports Analytics Conference in partnership with Fusion Sport. While I'm there, I'll be in the data visualization room presenting on how we aggregate information and data streams to make better informed decisions on athletes' health, well-being and performance. I look forward to seeing you there. Go Ducks! So for us, the, the purpose of that role and, and my role in coming to the university is trying to use the data for the correct purpose and having centralised decision making. And to do that, we have to firstly work out what we're looking at, how we're going to monitor it, and how we're going to change these things. So that process involves a lot of identification and a lot of discussion with coaches to try and define a performance model that we all understand and then we all know that we can work towards. You can then identify the discrepancies or the, the areas for opportunity or for the development in each of our athletes, whether that's Jordan Bell playing basketball, Tyler Crosby playing football, or, or whoever else is as a student athlete. We can work out their deficiencies, test that, go after it, and then try and move on. So what we're going to speak about today specifically is, is really how we aggregate and integrate all these different data streams. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of that and how that works for us. <coughs> so really just want to highlight that across our different areas of, of training, recovery, uh, practice, you know, talent identification, there's a lot of different technologies, some of which are, are up there I mentioned. You know, the force plates we use, the heart rate monitors, uh, the timing gates and the track, our EMR, medical systems, force plates, underwater treadmills, everything. Every time an athlete is involved or, or uses one of these pieces of information, we want to try and collect that data together to, again, feed back into that model so we can make a better decision. No point in living on a laptop in, in a lab over here and a laptop over here and no one can see it and no one can make a decision based on that. So for us, one of the ways that we've utilized uh, Fusion and, and Smart and Base to be able to do that, the example here is, is Bridge Athletic. So Bridge Athletic is a, a company we use to deliver our strength and conditioning program. So it's a programming tool, the coaches can enter their programs on there, the athletes come into the gym, and then they use the, uh, the iPads in the gym to enter their sets and reps, get the program, tell us what the weights are. It's also on your iPhone, you can do it from wherever, you get videos, you get feedback, Great. But again, if we don't aggregate that data into one place, it just lives on that software. We can't then marry it up to the training information, the injury information that we have. So for us, that was a relatively simple conversation with that company and with Fusion to create an API. So the back end stuff happens, the athlete enters the data on the iPad and it just gets pulled up into our athlete management system without any further touching of that information, which is great. The other example is our player load monitoring. So we use these category units across three sports. Fo American football, football, football or soccer, you guys, uh, and volleyball. Sorry, lacrosse, not volleyball. But we look at um, all the player load, the acceleration, the distance, all that stuff that you get from those units. And again, we've got that problem of how do we get that information into the same place. So we use a slightly different process for this in that we don't uh, use an API that automatically uploads it. But there's a, process where once we download the information from the, the catalog unit, again, lives on a computer, we download it and it gets automatically pulled up. So again, there's no double touching of that information, no manual entry, everything's taken care of through a slightly different process, the connectors and the uploaders. So the ability to get information into the system is excellent. Really easy, really good to, to be able to aggregate everything together. So once that's in, what do we do with it? How do we visualize it? How do we feed it back to coaches, to athletes, whoever that might be? So the example here is, is our injury information. So um, we have to use the electronic medical record system that the, the Pac-12 dictates, but we managed to pull the, the piece into here as well. And then we can start visualizing and feeding it back across coaches, across medical staff in different formats, whether that's on an iPhone or an iPad or on your PC or computer, however you want to do it. We can display them on some of the TVs and the facilities and show that information when we're having meetings or discussions around concussion or whatever it might be. So we highlight the appropriate injuries or key things for that sport. You know, injuries longer than seven days, concussions, whatever that might be. So we can easily see and highlight that piece of information. We can also then pull out the areas of injury or number of times people have been injured and visualize that in a way that's 
really quick, really easy, and allows us again to make these better decisions based on the information. We also do some musculoskeletal screening with our athletes on a weekly basis. So we look at things like their, their ankle dorsiflexion or their squat, whatever that might be. But how do you visualize that and feed it back? How do you tell the athlete how they relate to themselves, how they relate to the rest of their position group, the rest of the team? So there you've got a little box plot. That's kind of the range of the information that you know, most of it. You've got these two outliers that say what's your minimum and maximum of all time. And then you've got that brighter colored dot. What was your score today? And then you're ranked from top to bottom across your, your group. And it's very easy then to compare and contrast. So when Tyrell Crosby goes to the combine this week and works out as a left tackle, he knows how he compares to the other one, what his ankle dosh flex has been over time, how it works. We can drill down to that and then start relating it back to injury. So those red dots would be treatments or injuries. And what was your ankle dosh flexion as an example at that point in time? Does that contribute or not? Was it a factor that was affected? How does that, how does that work? We also use our, our daily reporting, so I talked about the GPS information getting sucked up and being in there immediately. Once that's done, this process is automatic. We built these reports for our coaches that give a summary of the day in terms of some key metrics that we look for, position groups, um, so aggregate some wellness information. But again, this is just living on a TV in the office that just automatically refreshes. We don't need to do anything. So once the data is uploaded, that reports are in with the coaches, and there's nothing else we have to do. We can see how things are tracking over time, any injuries, how the group are feeling, the wellness, so those key highlights that we all need to give to the coach. We can also use these hubs. <coughs> so if we have individual athletes that we want to then have a discussion around about, maybe they have some medical information, maybe they have an injury, maybe there's a case conference, for whatever reason, we can pull up these hubs and display them on the screen to, again, summarize that key information, whether that's the hydration, the weight, the body composition, their past injuries, whatever it might be, allows us to do that quickly and easily. And then the other piece that we've talked about reporting there from within the system. How can you then pull it out and maybe access it in a slightly different way? How can you make it accessible to people who have different levels of security, different roles? How do you visualize that information? And the way we've done that is that this uh, linkage, it's very easy to, to link the information again using Power BI, so this visualization tool. Microsoft. So we can then create some dashboards and the content really doesn't matter, but whether it's the summary of a season in terms of GPS and load and training availability, whether it's a comparison between teams of that uh, screen, musculoskeletal screening, so allow some competition uh, between different squads, whether it's progress over time with individual athletes, you can then interact with that and see their, their history. Um, or whether it's just tracking the weight for the, for the strength and distance staff. That's an important goal. Does that show, do they progress over time in the way they want it to be? So whether, whatever the goals are and the performance model that we've agreed upon, we can visualize that information back to them very, very easily. How can student athletes use the data to, to help them recover? Um, that interpretation really is on us and the medical staff and performance team, how we feedback that this might be the measure of if they're recovering faster or not. But Again, that's how they own the information, that's probably the next step, how you affect that. So it's a conversation, and then maybe there's some intervention, and then we can, like you said, we can measure that and look at the effect on this or whatever that might be. Uh, so the question is, is there a mandatory buy-in for coaches, or can coaches do what they want? Uh, absolutely nothing to mandatory, because that's the, the fastest way to make sure that no one does it. But in terms of getting their buy-in, then we have that conversation up front. Yes, some sports and some coaches will be more invested and more advanced right now. Um, but that's fine, because we've got 19 sports, so we're two years into the process, we'll try to spread this across different teams. But it's definitely not mandatory. If coaches want to take it in their own direction, that's the beauty of the flexibility of what we're doing. We can take their inputs, their data, and try and pull it in and, and make it meaningful for them. So we, we try and do that with however we can.